You may have heard around the Blender community that in order to start any project, you first delete the default cube. Seems a bit cruel, but in order to talk about adding and deleting, we should probably start here. Deleting is straightforward. We left click on the cube, hit delete. And that's it. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk lesson is over. Just kidding. <laughs> As with previous lessons we've seen so far, there's more than just what's obvious in Blender. If we right click on an object, let's say the camera this time, at the bottom of the contextual menu, you'll see that the hotkey for delete is not just delete, but X. This is a holdover from previous versions of Blender, and X can come in handy in other contexts where deletion can get very specific. We'll cover this more when we talk about edit mode, but it's probably good to flag this hotkey now. To add new objects, we go to the Add menu. That's up here at the top of our 3D view. Click on this and we can see a list of objects that we're able to add. You can also call up this menu by using the hotkey Shift A. This will show the exact same menu, but now it's floating wherever you have your mouse. We call this a contextual menu. We're mainly sticking to mesh objects in the Blender Basics course, but you can already see that you can add a number of objects, curves, text, grease pencil objects, reference images, and more. Let's try adding an object that we've not yet covered, like metaballs, for instance. Shift A, metaball, and we'll just go with the ball here. Now on its own, it may not seem like much. We can grab it, rotate it, as much as you can with a sphere, scale it. But now let's add a second one or a second meta object. If we grab this second object and start pulling it away from the first one, you can see how its surfaces are affected by the proximity to each other. Now this can be a lot of fun, especially if you have several meta objects. I'll delete these meta balls now by selecting them and hitting delete. And I'll re-add a new cube. Shift A, Mesh, Cube. Notice that it got added right at the center of the world. This is actually a coincidence since we've not moved our 3D cursor. That's this red and white barred circle with the crosshairs along the axes. You can place this cursor anywhere by either selecting the cursor tool in the toolbox, then left clicking where you'd like it to be, or you can hold down Shift and right click in any spot you'd like. Now a handy tip to know is if you shift right click on the surface of an object, it will snap the cursor anywhere on that face. If you want to reset the cursor to the world origin, shift S is the hotkey for bringing up the snapping menu. One of these options is snap cursor to world origin. If you'd like to add something in a specific spot, let's say at the position of an existing object, let's select a lamp, then use Shift S and select Cursor to Selected. From a previous lesson, we know that we could have several objects selected at once, but only one is ever active. So if we add our camera to our selection, when we hit Shift S and snap Cursor to Active, the cursor will now jump to the camera's origin point. I'm going to place the cursor in an arbitrary spot. Shift, right click in 3D space. The Shift S menu also allows some other snapping objects, including snap selection to cursor. Now, if we have more than one object selected, snapping to cursor will place all the selected objects at the same point. That's why there's this option, Selection to Cursor Keep Offset. This will move all of the selected objects and their median point is what will snap to the cursor. After using any of these operations, you may have noticed that this dialog box pops up, usually with the last operation we performed. Let's place the cursor somewhere arbitrary, then add another mesh cube. Shift A, Mesh, Cube. The dialog box that appears is labeled Add Cube. Click on this small arrow if it's a collapsed for you, and you'll open it up. It will display some information about the cube, such as the size, location, and rotation. And if you wish to fine tune any of these parameters, you can do so here 
Just know that this is best to do immediately after this dialog appears. If you accidentally deselect or select something else and the dialog box disappears, you can bring it back with F9, but just remember it will only show the details for the last operation. If you perform another operation, say move your cursor and add another object, then this dialog disappears and a new one takes its place. Let's shift right click over here and add a mesh plane. The default alignment is set to world, but if we click on this drop down, we have a couple of other options view and 3D cursor. Do you remember how to swing into front view? That's right, numpad one. Now when we change our align from world to view, the plane will be facing us in front view. Notice, however, how the rotation X has changed to 90 degrees. Its local coordinates will be different from the global ones. If you need an object to be oriented differently to how it is placed in the world, but require its coordinates to match the global ones, you select that object, then under the object menu, go to apply and select rotation. Now its X rotation is returned to zero, but the transform has not been reset. Now remember for most objects like this, the transform options can always be found in your properties editor and fine tuned at any time that you should need. This last operation dialog box just gives you the option to do it as you work. Some objects in Blender, such as the Taurus, are a bit more reliant on the adjust last operation dialog. And there's a few hidden tips that I'm gonna take you through now. Let's add a Taurus. Shift A, Mesh, Taurus. We see the options here, major and minor segments, dimensions mode, and right at the top, we have an operator presets dropdown along with a plus and minus. Besides adjusting the parameters for this torus, you can also save those presets to this menu. In fact, you can save several presets, and each time you add a new torus, you can recall these as your new starting point. There's a tool here in the toolbox that allows you to add a set of primitive objects by clicking and dragging anywhere in your 3D viewport. It also has hidden options to allow you to add a cone, a cylinder, and two kinds of sphere. Let's add a cylinder. With no other objects in the scene, our cursor changes to this white grid in a feathered circle floating along the floor plane. Click and drag and you'll create the first dimension of this cylinder. If you hold down Alt, the circle will grow out from this point. If you hold down Shift, you can constrain the proportions of this circle, but it will grow out from the point you clicked. If you hold down both Alt and Shift, you can grow the circle out from this point with its width and depth proportional. You click to commit and the tool now changes to add height to your cylinder. Again, if you hold down Alt, it will pull the top and bottom out equally from the center. Click when you're satisfied with the height, your adjust last operation will allow you to fine tune any parameters you wish. Now let's add a cone the same way, but this time let's hover the tool over the cylinder. You'll notice that our placement grid can snap to the cylinder's faces. So we can add a cone which sits exactly on the top here or grow out perpendicular to any of these faces. So these are the main methods you'll be using to add objects to your scene. Try adding some objects on your own. It doesn't have to be a mesh and it's okay if you don't understand it just yet. Just be aware of how you can add something and delete it or adjust its last operation to give you some further options. If you're so inclined, why don't build yourself something cool out of primitives by snapping each new primitive to the surface of an existing one. Maybe make some presets for a torus or other objects that allow you to save presets like that. Have a little bit of fun before moving on to the next lesson. <laughs>